uh, I'd like to thank the organizers, uh, the whole ICON team and Bear for the opportunity. So today we'll discuss a topic where uh, most of the clinicians and medical oncologists don't have much idea. But it's a new entity which is uh, coming up in a big way and how to deal with it. So my topic today is uh, the management of non metastatic CRP and the role of retinotomide in it. So, if we talk about the uh, prostate cancer disease progression, uh, ninety percent in, in our setting, I don't uh, have uh, uh, the much data, but I think uh, overall, if we see ninety percent of the patients uh, present with a localized disease, I, in Indian context, I think this uh, figures don't justify. Uh, most of patient, especially which we medical oncologists see, comes in uh, metastatic settings. Uh, they initially are non-metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer and as the disease progresses uh, they can either change to metastatic HSPC or non-metastatic non HSPC with a local regional disease. So uh, almost 20-25% of the patients will have a, a prostate cancer diagnosis with a metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer and with the evolution of the disease from this non-metastatic HSPC, the patients who have relapsed after the local therapy who are on ADT will ultimately uh, be a non-metastatic CRPC with a rising PSA level uh, and the testosterone levels in the castrate levels. So almost 15 to 20% of the patients uh, will be uh, non-metastatic CRPC uh, within the next uh, five years of follow-up. And if we talk about this uh, non-metastatic CRPC, so um, the majority of the patients uh, of uh, this uh, metastatic CRPC will be progressing from the non-metastatic CRPC and of the non-metastatic CRPC almost 30 to 40 percent of the patients will convert to metastatic CRPC within the next two years. Once the disease uh, converts from the non-metastatic CRPC to the CRPC, uh, metastatic CRPC, then the overall prognosis becomes very poor and the mortality increases almost from 15% to 60%, so almost a fourfold increase in the mortality. So it's very important to uh, catch and pick up the disease early before they become metastatic. And if the metastasis develops, ultimately uh, the, uh, the median survival of the uh, patients with the metastatic CRPC becomes one to one and a half years. So how the disease evolve is important, with time uh, the, there will be mechanisms like the upregulation of the androgen receptors or uh, there will be other pathways from which the testosterone gets secreted like from the adrenal gland and ultimately the separation of the androgen deprivation therapies goes off and we uh, see uh, the proliferation of the uh, prostate cancer cell despite the testosterone levels being in the uh, castration levels. So in this context, the most important thing to see is the PSA date, it means the doubling time. So the shorter the doubling time, the poorer is the prognosis. So these are the curves uh, which is showing that the lesser the time, like if less than three months, almost 50% of the patients will uh, uh, develop metastasis in next uh, uh, th uh, six to eight months. And if it is more than 15 months, then uh, the progression of the disease and the metastasis is quite slow. So it's very important to see these curves to uh, see how the PSA with time is evolving and how our disease uh, is progressing. So what are the therapeutic goals in non metastatic CRPC because these patients will not be symptomatic for their disease. So it's very important to have a treatment which does not affect the quality of life, which does not uh, uh, impair their, uh, uh, hamper their daily activities of living. So first is to extend the OS, which is the main important point. And then to maintain the quality of life, uh, because largely these patients are asymptomatic and we need to give them the therapy, which does not interfere with this uh, uh, daily routine activities. And third is managing, managing the PSA levels and the anxiety, which is uh, quite practical in current setting that uh, people are uh, uh, tensed that why their PSA is rising and how it will be tackled. So these three points are very important. So moving <coughs> with the current treatment guidelines, uh, the NCCN suggests that if uh, there is a uh, castration level uh, prostate cancers 
uh, which are non-metastatic, we see with the PSADT if less than 10 months or if it's more than 10 months. If more than 10 months, then I think the monitoring is justified. But if it's less than 10 months, then this uh, particular disease is very bad. And there are three uh, current options like apalutamide, daralutamide, and zalutamide. Uh, apart from that, ESMO and AU guidelines also suggest that these particular group of patients do bad and almost 40% of the patients will develop metastasis in the next one year. So how daralutamide works, it's a non-steroidal andro androgen receptor antagonist having a very high affinity to the androgen receptors and uh, it strongly inhibits the translocation of the androgen receptors to the androgen receptor binding elements and ultimately the antagonistic action of the delutamide is, uh, has come into action. How this particular drug is different from the uh, previous drugs from enzalutamide and apalutamide is that it is having a flexible linker and a polar group uh, but the, uh, in uh, enzalutamide and apalutamide the core is rigid. So being more polar and being more flexible uh, it uh, the penetration in the blood brain barrier is less of the dalalutamide. So the normal side effect which we see in enzalutamide and apalutamide is not seen in dalalutamide. Talking about the same, uh, we know that our patients who are on enzalutamide will have a lot of uh, cognitive uh, effects, will ha have a lot of CNS symptoms with seizures. And uh, as per the available data, the dalalutamide have 10% uh, lesser penetration in the blood brain barrier. So the side effects profile of the dalalutamide is much better as compared to the APA and azalutamide. Uh, this is again uh, the data was uh, collected respectively, uh, prospectively and uh, we came to know that the cerebral blood flow as compared to the ENZA and DARA uh, and there was a significant difference uh, between them and uh, the ENZA was having a more decrease in cerebral blood flow as compared to the uh, daralutamide and uh, the uh, the outcomes of the cerebral blood flow are almost equal in the placebo and the daralutamide arm. So that ultimately lead to a cognitive uh, function impairment and uh, the, uh, uh, the mental ability of the patient. So from where this uh, uh, our indication for the daralutamide comes into the picture of uh, non metastatic CRPC is we as from the Aramis trial. So almost uh, 1500 patients and uh, they have taken non metastatic CRPC with a PSADT of uh, less than 10 months. The stratification was done based on the, the PSA doubling time of less than 6 months or more than 6 months and the use of osteoclast activity. Uh, that this was a 2 is to 1 randomization trial with the ADT being, being the backbone. In the one arm they have combined with the daralutamide, other arm with the placebo. And the primary endpoint was the metastasis free survival and the secondary endpoints were overall OS and time to pain progression and the time to the uh, secondary cytotoxic chemotherapy. There are other exploratory endpoints like uh, PSA response time or the time to the PSA progression. So if we <coughs> talk about the primary endpoint which was metastasis survival, the hazard ratio is uh, uh, 0.41 it means that was almost 60% uh, reduction uh, in the uh, intervention arm, daralutamide arm as compared to the placebo arm. It was 40 months versus 18 months. And the same was seen in the OS, uh, the hazard, impression hazard ratio of almost uh, 0.69 with a significant p-value and uh, the uh, there was 31% ris uh, risk reduction in the daralutamide arm as compared to the placebo arm. So it has given both a metastasis survival as well as a overall survival uh, with the period of time. The other exploratory endpoints uh, which were seen was the time to pain progression, the time to first cytotoxic chemotherapy and the time to first uh, symptomatic skeletal events all were, benef all were in favor of the daralutamide arm and the p-value was uh, significant in all the uh, secondary exploratory endpoints also. So uh, again, the PSA progression was significantly delayed by the daralutamide. Uh, it was almost uh, three years in daralutamide versus 15 months in the placebo arm. So if we talk about the overall uh, data, it has met its uh, primary endpoint as well as secondary endpoint. Uh, improving the outcomes uh, in the non metastatic CRP settings. If we talk about the PSA response rates in the intervention arm, there was a decline of almost 
uh, uh, more than 90% in the 50% of the patients and in uh, uh, the PSA decline was almost more than 50% decline in just one third of the patient. Uh, whereas in the placebo arm it was uh, not uh, much significant. And the overall response, the median change in the uh, intervention arm was almost 90%. Again, talking about the side effects, uh, the quality of life was maintained in the dalorotamide arm in Aramis trial. The major side effects were uh, bowel symptoms and the urinary symptoms. Bowel symptoms in uh, form of uh, either bloating or blood in stools or in frequency of uh, urine symptoms or in interference with the For the glitch. So the side effect profile was also quite uh, reasonable and uh, the major side effects were bowel and the urinary symptoms and uh, the, the main problem which we face with enzalutamide is the seizures and the cognitive dysfunction is not seen in the uh, RMS trial. Discontinuation due to adverse effect was almost same as placebo almost uh, 9 to 10 percent. So the tolerability is very good, uh, as much as good as a placebo arm. Uh, and if we see the uh, patients in the RMS trial who were able to tolerate the full plant dose, it was almost equal to the placebo arm. And almost 85% of the patients uh, continued their treatment without any dose modification. We rarely see a trial where dose modification and the compliance is so good. Uh, the emerging treatment related adverse effects were most common was fatigue followed by falls and fractures and hypertension was uh, commonly seen almost uh, 9 to 10 percent in the uh, uh, deralutomide arm. But rarely we have seen any grade 3 or grade 4 toxicities. So this is again uh, one thing which shows that a lot of patients who are prostate cancer are elderly and they are on concomitant medications and Aramis uh, trial has shown that the darolutamide does not have much interactions with the other, age, other uh, drugs which are going on but there is a lot of uh, drug drug interactions with the enzalutamide especially and uh, apalutamide. So that is also a reasonable uh, thing to take into, into consideration in this particular uh, subset of patients because they are elderly and having a lot of comorbidities. So if we talk about the conclusions on the efficacy part, yes, it has uh, proved uh, with time that there is a OS as well as a meaningful PF metastasis survival benefit and uh, metastasis survival is almost more than doubled in the intervention arm. Safety wise, it is as good as a placebo in com as compared to the side effects. So I think in the clinical practice, this is uh, quite a uh, remarkable thing to have such drugs where uh, the asymptomatic patients who are getting treatment does not uh, uh, have much of the side effects and they can maintain their quality of life. So with this I'll end my talk. I think uh, in this particular space uh, uh, non metastatic CRPC, dalorotamide might be one of the choices which we have to consider. Uh, this particular subset we don't see much in our clinical practice because most of our patients present to us very late. But yes, if we pick up early, uh, we have seen that uh, the overall outcomes are, will be very much favorable before they turn into a metastatic CRPC. With this, I'll end my talk.